for this for some people. So the first thing I want to work on is some basic grip breaking when we are stand up fighting. And really, in all honesty, grip breaking is the same whether we're on the ground or we're standing up. The mechanics really remain kind of the same. So we're going to start with this standing up. First of all, it's not waiting around. Once I'm probably not going to get my grips broken now unless he really wants to dedicate a whole bunch of energy to that, which is always going to leave my uki exposed on some part. So number one thing is grip breaking. You don't remember anything else from like all everything I'm going to show you today. Yeah, be proactive. Do not sit around like he brought Robbie grabs me. Like here, I'm good. like yeah, get a good grip breaker. Like it, see, I had to lean so far back and now I'm all exposed. Like come grip. Immediately. Immediately address the grips. And it's a little less critical than it is in um on the ground. But staying whoever really establishes the first their grips first and what they think they're comfortable, what they like, is gonna get the takedown and the throw. Like an inordinate amount of time. So much so that judo actually has made rules now so you can't grip break immediately because they're trying to get people attacking more. So he comes in. This is the power grip. This is what's going to move me around because it has the least amount of slack. And at least I have the least amount of control over my torso. He can try to move my arm around. Even without this, I can, I can fight that relatively easily. No matter if it's a cat grip, C grip here, grip on the bicep. Right? It's all going to have problems. So we're going to go over two grip breaks that I like to use. Assuming I'm getting this right when I get their hands on them. The first, where this is weak, I'm going to turn my knuckles, pull my chest, and drive. And I always turn my knuckles towards the person. Now put your arm again, get your grip back. It's exceptionally hard. Because uh, now it's like my bone structure being forced. It's not like a muscle thing. I don't keep it bent here. Now he's stronger than me, so I'm going to get it. He's being blocked by this. Okay, as soon as he grabs, I get in, I turn, because this is where the weak part is, right in, and I'm down. Now, I have two grips. He can get one wherever he wants, but I'm in a much more dominant position. Okay? So now, second. Oh, here, I'm just going to record this. I have a keyboard. It's going to be missing. Second is a two-on-one grip break. Saying that he grabs. Maybe I'm trying so that I can't get this to work. Two-on-one. One, two, and I'm... Keeping this tight. If there's slack, you gotta kill the slack on this. Now, first big mistake is with this. My shoulders are past my heels. I'm falling. He doesn't have to do it. He can probably just shove me and I'm gonna fall. Like, unless I'm really a bit more athletic or I have really good balance, I'm like a gymnast or something or a tumbler, I'm gonna stumble at least and then I'm gonna get taken down. I don't, I, I, I don't know why people, they pull it with them like this. I don't want to do that. Exactly, I'm just going to rush into me. From here, I turn, I pop out at an angle, but I move my rear leg back. Boom. And now, same thing. Knuckles forward, and I can then establish my grip. Time. He's here. Boom. And I come with whatever grip I want. This is going to be the universal concept. I get this, and then my knuckles against it. That's what's going to keep that arm at bay, because now it's your whole like bone structure keeping it away, rather than like, I feel like great, and I do this. I don't have a whole lot. Of, yeah, he's going to break that grip, and now I'm in a lot of trouble, because he's pissed off I just messed his hands up. Cool? So we're just going to go through the grips. Come in, boom, and he's going to get, go through his grip breaks. It's one, boom. And see, yes, practice that, see? Give a little resistance, try to move around. Go back. Exactly. Get used to immediately blocking that hand, getting it close to their body. Cool? Try on the thing. Go for like three minutes.
If he, I'm still buying code my, I don't like doing that. I like just, you see what you're, do it back. See how hard that is? Just like driving that in? Yeah, I almost always back click. Yep. So you grab them too. No, we're not the same here. You're not like a, I'm right? not a southpaw stand. Grab, grab, grab the same size of bell. He's grabbing the bell. Grab the sleeve. That's in the apple store. Exactly. That's like your basic thing you need to do is just get grips. So it's not a push, right? Right here. I get this here. I turn a little bit. Pop. If I get to start pushing. Pushing, there's no way it ever breaks. Ask me, you have to have an element of violence in it. That's why now you have people taking their hands all the time. Yep. Boom. Yes, Ram. Good. So not not the palm. This the knuckles. When you grab it, yes. See, push. Extend the arm. See? Exactly. If it's a palm, you can't stop it. Pop! Yes! And now get your other hand on. Get a grip. Good. You see, keep that arm away from you. And now you have a dominant grip for maybe a, a couple seconds. So you can do that, you can fight with it. Oh. Yeah. It's how he's making not, not hesitation. He's going, boom. Mm -hmm. If you hesitate, you're, you're dead. It's like Top Gun. It's a dead. Dick Campbell will take on a $24 million plane. Top Gun? You glad that you got to help us? He wasn't even alive when that came out. He was still upside down in his father's balls. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, other person! Just keep him moving. Yeah, mess up right here. It's still, it's still, it's still exactly the same.
Oh, uh, 100%. Boom throw. Also, judo, you can't throw in the first like 10 seconds of the match or so. Really? Well, my instructors, he literally, half of his judo matches were like over 20 seconds. He was like 20 pounds, he was like in the middle of the weight class and there were 40 pound differences. He was like, describe the troll. Is that 40 pound differences in judo? Used to be, like back in like 50s and 40s. Yeah. yeah. He was a bad man. Yeah. Jimmy was a bad man. Grab him, Tony. He grabs you, you grab him. Always. Yeah. All right. So now we're going to go over grip breaking when we're on top in guard. Which is going to lead to what we're going in. So, here inside of Bobby's guard. Again, he either has a sleeve grip or a lapel grip. So we have one is you always address the collar grip first. That's one that's gonna choke you and murder you, be bad for you. Telling you, I told everyone I could last weekend. That you're that he's 133 pounds, Brent. He put on 20 pounds in two months. Yeah, really? Yeah. It's just that, that growing age. That is. That's that's right yep. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So first thing first, 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 Close your arms. Hold them down. Hold them down. Close your arms. Always close your arms. So sit. Sit your back straight. What's your name? 
Yeah. 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 So, yeah, don't do that. Yeah, yeah. Your neck. yeah exactly. Yeah. I don't want to yeah. sit here yeah. right. falling yeah. over my knees. Keep a, keep a posture. Like the basic posture is like, oh, oh, days so like yeah. Yeah. yeah, grab a solid, yeah. strong yeah. grip. Yeah. Keep your neck away from my ribs. Good. Yeah, it's oh, okay. Your hands get stronger. He's fine. My toes don't bend yeah. under. Turtle, yeah. turtle. No people. I'll show you later. <laughs> No, you're, you're flat on your feet. Put your ball on your feet down. What do you mean? Like your, your toes like this, yeah. you want this part down. Like, yeah, active toes like this. Like they're about to start running, like that. Yep, that way I can stand up easy. My toes don't even curl that way. I don't know why, but they must go back yeah. straight. But, but it's, the, it's the best way to get yep. the proper, proper feet. Now, once in a while, you're not going to be able to do that, but right. you should make it a habit. Yeah, totally. It, it, Little it, toes it, make difference. It does. It does. It gets your feet. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, grab it with both hands. So he gets used to having a grip break while you have you know, some tension on the body. Okay. No hands on the ground. No hands touching the ground. Hot lava. No hands on the ground. If you get casual, put your hands on his body. Ground is hot lava. What's going on? Yep. All right. So now, let's go to passing. As I saw this in a couple of different matches, for people passing, and there are a lot most passings we've done on your feet. Josh, may I go on? What? Not yet. At eight o'clock you go. Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. <laughs> so, my head's down. There's something to hook on as I'm passing, so I should inside the car. Posture is super important. I really want to have a flat plane here. As best I can, you know, considering we're people and we have those and stuff. But the moment I look down, it's something that's much easier to hook onto the head. And it's instinctively going to make you start bending your back and breaking your posture. You're going to have to come forward and put some pressure in to get your hips back. But if I'm bent down, it makes it much easier for us to hook on. And we're going to deal with them shooting an arm bar and passing from there. And if I lean really far past, my knees, it puts me off balance and he'll sweep me easily. The both things that I saw on Sunday. So we're going to work on building up and passing as they begin to isolate work for an armbar. So, side of guard, you have right, right here. I'm grabbing above here and I like to grab right above the sternum, right above the sternum, and I bunch the knee up, drive my hand in. Then, you know, right here, I stand up. As I stand up, I'm looking up. I do not, I'm, I know where he is. And you're going to have to rely on his tension and pulling on your knee to know what's going on. So I cannot say here, but I'm up here, and I'm here, look. He's going to knock me down. Even if he doesn't hook my leg. Even if he doesn't hook my leg, if I'm up here, and he can shoot it, so I can have to put the leg over my head. See? Okay, so I'm now hooked in, and he gets it over like the top of the head. So he has the arm bar as well. Well, what this yep. is, he has a hook in which he can manipulate my body. Forget the arm bar as like an attack so far. What happens, because he has my arm isolated and he's able to hook over my head, he now has a means of creating energy and creating a fulcrum. Okay? And that's what we have to avoid. Again, I'm here. Even without anything, like just, just hold my arm. And he gets this leg over my head because my head's down. See? Arm in your boot now, and all things being equal, he can shake and 
knock me over. Now, we're actually rolling a fight and probably not going to be swept that easily. But without resistance, it doesn't have to do a whole lot there. Okay, that's what makes it important. Now, this way. happens, my head's up. Same situation. I put the leg over my head. See? I'm also become a little taller. So I have to have this flat plane here instead of driving and looking at the person. Okay? So what we're going to do for this drill, or for going through like this idea, and get a grip, control an arm, stand up on the side you have an arm. One, two, here. Let him turn and shoot the arm bar. Right? I should be able to stay up here. Okay? And now to pass, I can do a couple things. I can bring this arm out, push over, pass like to a cradle, or I drop my shoulder on, come around, and pass. Is there anything stopping him from still grabbing your leg and sweeping you from doing that? He can grab my leg, but when my keep a good posture, it's pretty much harder for him to sweep me. I mean, you're never 100% safe, because I'm standing up, I'm giving up balance. But can you guys, you can know, hook my leg like he did before? Absolutely, but because he really can't hook anything over my head, it's become a lot harder. He has to do more to get, to get, to get that takedown or get that sweep. Make sense? Oh, sorry, I was three. Do you need to see that? Or? No, no. Oh, yeah. Just assume this is. For you, I'm preaching to the choir. Let uh, me just take over then. Go with Bryn and. Yeah. Right. yeah. There's someone who can do it. So yeah, shoot your legs up. Try to shoot for that arm bar. Yeah. So, see how close your feet are? Uh -huh. Never stand with your feet close. You're going to have to give a little bit of pace. Because you are, otherwise, you'll just fall. Okay. Well, we're just going through the arm bar. We're just going through the arm bar. We're not trying to sweep. No, no, no. I mean, you want me to sweep your legs. Oh, yeah. If your head's up, your face should be much harder for him to hook on to your body. Yeah, yeah. Move that. So, why don't leave that leg there so long? As also, you're going to speak your knee or something. You got to move, let your body move together. Yeah. All right, and what is he doing? Now you turn around. So look, head up, back straight, and let's spin around. You spin around. Bring your hips towards me. There you go. See that? Now take your arm out. And now you pass. Like, see your chest on him. And how is that? Move this leg. Yeah, so you're balanced. So you're like this. Okay. Look my knees, make me like mine. Good. The idea is now you have a means to get past, past the garment and getting out of the legs and around. Or over them, or under. Or... Yeah, it's really hard. See? Just look down once so you can, so you can, so you can feel it. Now, come back once you're there, your stomach's on, you gotta seat back. And now, yeah, it's still pins and packs, and I try to get the arm broken a lot. You feel how you're, you feel how you're hooked on his leg? On, on his, like, on his head? Yeah. That makes him, I mean, literally, he's just coming back over there. Yeah. Yeah. Can you grab, hand here. Are you just trying to keep him here? What's up? Good night. It's not bedtime yet. Yep. One more. Look up. Alright. Take your arm out. Like, there's no reason to just like, yeah, take your arm there. He needs to go home. He needs to start swinging. He needs soup. He needs soup. Head up, head up, Ram. Look up, look on the ceiling. Yeah, see? Not, not back. Not, look, don't lean back, just look up. And now pass. It's cold. You can't. It's cold. Is, uh, it's messing with his memory. 
Take an arm, throw his leg to one side and pass. That's all. Just throw me. Throw his leg to the side, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. All the time. Yep. Other person. So, say you yeah. So you're looking down. So far, man. Exactly. Look, look up. It'll bring your hips in. So literally. So you come up. Not just sit on but don't your head up. Good, good. Yeah, see? Yeah. Especially because you're tall, it's making it hard for me. You can't cook on you. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, don't look down at him. Do not look down. Up. Not down. Wake up. Yeah. Good. You feel the difference? Once that comes in, it's like, it's also, they would have won their match literally from just doing, like the person swept them twice. It became 10-6 um, uh, rounds. Yeah, when the streets went to a dark pass. And okay, you get used to it too. It's like you just fucking your body used to moving different than stand up. You know, stand up to a whole different game. Body just moving in a different way. Yeah. Oh, is he happy he gets to leave? He's not leaving, so I say so. You have homework tonight? What? You will have to explore what tomorrow. It's Tuesday. Yeah, it's tomorrow. There's no hurricane day for you. Yeah, what? <laughs> There's a hurricane coming through. What? But don't worry, we'll be open. We'll be on. Oh, we're here all day. 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 Next really big thing I want to address is we're in half guard and the person pressures us to turn the wrong way. It's like, come on, half guard. Here, I'm turned in and he pressures me to turn me here. Right? This is really bad. He's going to put that arm under my head, right? And you can, like, before, like, say I'm just here latching on, he comes under my head around here. He comes under, grabs the top lapel. So now he's an anchor with that bottom arm. Now I can't just turn. This arm's in danger. My neck's in danger. My back is in danger. Right? From just being pressured here, and or say I come under, and he's dropping a shoulder on my face. Here, like, oh, the other way. Like, exactly. He's putting a lot of pressure into me here. You know, there's a... Uh, I watched uh, someone lose basically because they just cracked under this. Okay? So he's here putting a layer, putting a lot of pressure. I've got to do a lot of things here. Uh, just to go over what can happen. This top hand grabs here. He puts his hand behind my head. And pull. Oh. That's quick. And 
It's a, that, like, that choke's like 200 years old and it's still really effective. He has a two collar grip, like one, two, boom, pulls. Yes. He has a bow and arrow choke. He has Kimura, Ezekiel choke. He has a Kimura. He has a straight arm bar. You know, you have to take a leg with it off if he's good. There's a lot he has access to because he forced you and turbled up. So number one, you cannot crack under this pressure. You got to be in your head that you're in for a bad time because you messed up or they did something really right. Okay? So you, like mentally, you just got to be prepared for what can happen to you in this situation. So he gets his grips back, he's underneath putting a lot of pressure. Right? If I have this here, if, you know, what happens, he can't put pressure on my face, but he has more access to my back. If I have my arm under here, it's not quite access to my back, but he can really drop on my face. Putting a lot of pressure, right? Hugging in and coming down. So, I have to do a couple things. One, I have to be aware of everything that's in danger. My arm, my neck, and my back, okay? I have to be very aware of all the different ways he can attack me so I can adjust accordingly if my opponent is, goes for any one of those things, okay? And I'm not going to go over every single thing right now because I just want you to get an idea. What should be going into my mind right now is I have to face him. I have to find a way, not just come on the ground, because also what happens, you come in here, you drop, he drops, drives his knee, comes under, boom, he can pass there or straight to mouth. By putting his knee on the ground, he comes a quarter guard, pass, boom. Right? So I must turn to face, which means I have to make like a 180 degree revolution or swivel, pivot, however you want to say. So, and I have to do that. Yeah, put your grips back. I have to do that under pressure. Now notice, keep his knee pointed up and the foot in tight. Right? I have to do this under threat. Yeah, get a little, just grip a little pedal, keep a little pressure on me. So when you're doing this with your partner on top, I want to put in pressure on you, okay? One, pulling a little bit. With my arms are out here, I'm gonna come inside, start working grips to make some space. That's number one, because I can't do anything if I'm unconscious. And yeah, dude, keep pulling. All right, it's gonna be uncomfortable, okay. And now look, I have to move, and I'm gonna try to hook and feed the leg here. And now, I'm okay. Now, if he's quick, he can step right over to me or step over to mouth. So, I don't hang out here. Turn. Now I'm in the game. I get my hooks in or I get my feet out, depending on what happens during like this mad scramble. But I'm turned and I have my four points of contact. One, two, three, four that I can defend myself with. Okay, or grip fight, or get back in the game. Because where I'm at before, all I'm doing is preventing him from passing to one side, and I'm not doing it very effectively. Turn right in. So here, get get that top lapel pull, right? See, I get this arm through. Now he's here, he's smashing my face. I put some big hug in my face, or whatever, right? This you have to be able to operate under this. In, right. Now don't just fall off like sit. Keep a little some tension. I'm gonna have to work mm -hmm. and come all the way until I'm facing him. One, two, three, four. All right. At least four points of contact. Come back out if you want and go to full guard, whatever it is. But I have to go from here all the way. And I had, when I decided to do it, like when you're rolling or sparring or fighting, it might be like. Two, three movements, but no more than that. It can't be like, boom. You have to make, you're gonna have to make some big and decisive movements in order to get out of the situation. Any uh, anything that can prevent you from being able to move at all if he does? So he's always on it. He can, he can. He does a lot of different options. He has. But right now, like, should I go now? I'm inside of his half guard. So I'm gonna. Pressure in, like I can hug his head. I like this grip a lot, so I can really put some pressure in here. Like almost immediately start, I can hand fight here, right? He has 
to get around to face me here. He has to figure out what he's going to do and what he's going to sacrifice. Because no matter what he does, he lifts this up, I come here. No matter what you do, there's something you're giving your opponent. Right? Because you're in a bad spot. So you just have to be aware and be sensitive to how they're pulling and pushing and putting pressure and moving on you. And you'll know, make your best judgments and make your best calls. And when you do it, you go all in. Cool? That's four. One, two, three. Why are you hiding? I don't like this. You're hiding. Yeah. Maybe this one to be a bad He's trying to waste time. Eight o'clock, it will come soon. It'll go <laughs> slow as I want it. Are you in here? Oh, man, this is it. Oh, yeah. Is that usually you have a full time. Yeah.